We've got our hands on the brand new 5600 XT from Sapphire, and to cut to the chase, we're highly recommending this as our GPU of choice for fluid 1080p gaming and even some 1440p gaming. There are some minor changes to the intended performance of the card, and with some BIOS flashes to the production version, we see a whole new level of performance that Nvidia does not have an answer to. Here's a big shout out to AMD for stepping up and bringing more competition to the table. To get into the hype for a minute, let's recap on the surprising launch of Nvidia's Supercards. The Supercards were launched in retaliation to AMD's 5700 and 5700 XT and seemed to beat the Navi cards on Navi's original pricing announcement at E3 2019. To give some context on what Supercards are, the 2060 Super was essentially a slightly cut down to 2070, but priced at a much lower price point, making it extremely good value. In fact, the 2060 Super's price point was what many expected the original 2070 to have launched at just under a year ago. So when Super was launched directly after the 5700 and the 5700 XT, it took some shine off AMD's long-awaited Navi GPU launch, making Nvidia seem the obvious choice over AMD, especially when you take ray tracing into account. Now that Nvidia had essentially showed its play, AMD then announced the 5700 and 5700 XT's true price point a day before the launch with the following statement. AMD embraces competition, which drives innovation to the benefit of gamers. In that spirit, we're updating the pricing for Radeon RX 5700 series graphics cards. Now, this essentially turned the tables in Team Raid's favour once again, and the kicker was this post on Twitter by Scott Herkelman, Vice President and General Manager of the Radeon Business Unit. Talk about competition. Coming back to today, the 5600 XT at 279 US dollars was originally targeted to fight in the Nvidia 1660 Super and 1660 Ti space at 229 and 279 US dollars respectively. But once again, Nvidia tried to upset the Navi launch by dropping the higher tier RTX 2060 to the price of 299. Now, this was the first time anyone could get their hands on a ray tracing card at a sub $300 price point, making it extremely difficult to pick something other than an Nvidia graphics card. Well, turns out, with a couple of magic BIOS updates, Team Red bumped up the 5600 XT's performance by up to 20%, even outperforming the RTX 2060 in some games. Uh, this is exceptional, especially when considering that this is a cheaper $279 US dollar card from AMD. The 5600 XT could genuinely be the most important launch of Navi till date, in a segment that AMD hasn't had a hand in since their much older 480, 580, and 590 refreshes. Enough history, now let's dive in. On first glance, the Sapphire Pulse 5600 XT isn't a budget build card at all. Uh, it has a decently thick cooler design at 2.3 slots compared to the traditional 2 slots, allowing for a deeper aluminum heatsink and two larger 95mm lower RPM fans to increase thermal performance and reduce noise. It comes with the signature Pulse exterior of black, silver and red, which we personally don't like that much. And not much of the design looks gimmicky and cheesy, but it does come with a solid back plate that's very much welcome at this price point. Uh, we do, however, love the Sapphire logo for its understated LED glow once installing your build. The downside of overbuilding the card is that while temperatures and performance is fantastic, larger cards are not as easily installed in tiny small form factor or ultra small form factor cases. Uh, we've noticed a trend of Sapphire having a larger width for their cards, extending way past the screw brackets and impeding easy installation into something like the Stricom DA2. The card is fed by a single 8-pin PCIe power cable and, in conjunction with the traditional 75 watts over the PCIe X16 slot, supplies enough power to sufficiently support the 180 watt power target that the 5600 XT employs. For display in out, we're looking at a pretty typical quad port setup. A Sapphire has equipped the card with three DisplayPort 1.4 outputs as well as an HDMI 2.0 output. Uh, with daisy chaining or MST splitters, it's possible to drive up to six monitors from the card. AMD has invented a new GPU for the Radeon RX 5600 XT. Instead, the company is using a further cut-down version of Navi 10, which is already used for the Radeon 5700 series. The Radeon RX 5600 XT is set to be firmly between the RX 5700 and RX 5500 XT in performance. Before the BIOS update, the 5600 XT spotted a game clock of 1375 MHz and a boost clock of 1560 MHz. Now, after flashing the BIOS, we see the game clock updated to a massive 1615 MHz and the boost clock to 1750 MHz. Uh, the memory clock has also been bumped up to 14 gigabits per second from the original 12 gigabits per second, which gives the card the most performance boost you'll see in our benchmarks. As a result of the higher clocks and memory clocks, the target power has also increased to 180 watts, which is pretty reasonable considering the amount of performance it gives. Let's jump into the benchmarks. We compared the RX 5600 XT to the GTX 1660 Super and the RTX 2060 using an open test bench running an Intel Core i5 8600K with 16GB of RAM at 2666MHz on a MSI Z370A Pro. 
For clarity, the RX 5600 XT was using the latest performance boosted BIOS and the only driver available to us at this time, uh, that's 20.1.1. The RTX 2060 and GTX 16 Super were both on version 441.66. Now all tests were run 3 times and the simple average was taken. First, we ran 3 times by. Uh, the 5600 XT scored about 15.4% better than the 1660 Super and about 0.4% better than the 2060, uh, putting the 5600 XT in a clear lead ahead of the 1660 Super but with relatively equivalent performance to the 2060. On Unigine's super position, the 5600 XT maintained its lead on the 1660 Super with 18.5% better performance but performed about 10% worse than the 2060. And moving on to Shadow of the Tomb Raider benchmark, the 5600 XT continued to outperform the 1660 Super by an average of 14 FPS and still ran better than the RTX 2060 by about 9 FPS. Where thermals are concerned, the 5600 XT we've got from Sapphire came in with the highest idle temperatures at 55 degrees Celsius, uh, but that's likely due to the fact that it's got an idle fan stop mode. Uh, the fans kicked in once we started running Fermark, and after 30 minutes, we see the 5600 XT coming in at 68 degrees Celsius, which is about 1 degree hotter than the 1660 Super and 6 degrees cooler than the 2060. Bringing this review to a close, it seems like this is AMD season since Zen 2 was launched. Navi is living up to all our expectations and finally bringing solid pound for pound competition to Nvidia, and more importantly, taking back the much coveted sub 300 US dollar segment. As you've already heard in the intro, we're picking this as our choice for the ultimate 1080p gaming card. Our benchmarks show that it handily beats any of the 1660 series from Nvidia and it even trumps the more expensive RTX 2060 in some games. That being said, initial adopters may have to jump through hoops by updating the BIOS themselves, but who doesn't like a free upgrade, right? And it isn't that hard at all. You know, I'll take that any day for a 20% performance uplift with just a few clicks of a button. Coming in at 280 US dollars or 440 Singapore dollars, we can't recommend this card enough for all the things it brings to the table. It runs quiet, has a relatively efficient power draw, and most importantly, offers tons of performance at 1080p and even 1440p. Now, Nvidia has reacted by dropping the price of their Founders Editions cards to $299, US but those aren't available locally in Singapore. Come on, Nvidia. Uh, and third-party manufacturers like Asus, MSI, and Gigabyte have yet to price in any of the price drops yet, which only further cements the 5600 XT as the best card to get in this segment. Once again, big props to AMD for driving such disruptive change in 2019 and moving forward in 2020, and we can't wait to see what else they have on the roadmap this year. Will we see a 2080 Ti and a 2080 Killer from AMD? Only time will tell. Thanks for watching guys. We hope you liked this video. Give us a thumbs up if you did and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon for notifications. Let us know in the comments what else you'd like us to check out and we'll see you in the next one. Peace out.